previous lecture, we talked about measuring the mean of a distribution and describing a distribution of data overall. In this lecture, we're going to talk about measures of dispersion around a mean for a distribution and introduce the concepts of variance and standard deviation. Let's begin just by building a little bit of intuition about why understanding the, the dispersion of data, not just the mean of data, is important for getting an understanding of what that data is telling us. Let's imagine a hypothetical observational study where we take a random sample of 10 people from City 1 and a random sample of 10 people from City 2, and we ask all 20 participants to tell us what their annual income is. In the table here on the left, I record what those income answers are for the 10 participants from City 1 and the 10 participants from City 2. So take a minute and just take a glance at those. The means of these samples are very close to one another. In City 1, the mean income is $79,840, and in City 2, the mean income is $81,000. But if we only pay attention to the mean, we're not picking up at a substantial difference between the income distributions across these two cities. And the table below is really going to drive home this point. In City 1, the minimum income in our sample is a little over $61,000, and the maximum income is just around, uh, around $97,000. Whereas in City 2, the minimum income is only $8,100, but the maximum income is $172,450. So just knowing the mean doesn't tell us enough about what makes these two cities different. In City 1, the distribution is pretty even. There are not big differences in the incomes of the people that we sampled from City 1, which suggests that there is a lot more economic equality in City 1. By contrast, in City 2, we see a pretty big spread in incomes just in our small sample, all the way from $8,000 to $170,000. That suggests that there is a lot of economic inequality in City 2. You have a lot of people in City 2 making very little money and a lot of people making quite a lot of money. The dispersion of incomes around this mean of around $80,000 is very different in City 1 and in City 2. So understanding this basic concept about how dispersions around a mean can vary quite a bit depending on your distribution, how might we quantify that concept? One really common way of doing this is by calculating the variance of a distribution. In this slide, I have the equation for the variance. The equation gives you roughly the average squared deviation from the mean. So what that means is that for every observation, we take the difference between that observation and the mean, and then we square that value. And then we add up that squared value for every observation in our data set, and divide that by the sample size minus 1. Now, in the mean, when we calculate the mean, we divide just by the sample size. In the variance, for a sample variance, we divide by the sample size minus 1. I just want to point this out. This is sort of a mathematical technicality. The reasons why we have to divide by n minus 1 are not really important for this class, but I do want to point out uh, that that is different from the formula for the mean, and it's not an accident that we divide by n minus 1. OK, so just to reiterate, these are the squared deviations from the mean, right? The squared distances of each observation from the mean. We add all those up, we divide by the sample size minus 1, and that gives us a number called the variance. In lecture 6, we had this hypothetical example where we polled 10 students and asked them what their height in inches was. So we got this small data set of 10 students and their heights. So we calculated the mean of this sample in the previous lecture and found that the mean of the sample, x bar, was 68 inches. Now let's think about calculating the variance of this sample. So for each of the observations that we have, we're going to take the value of the observation and subtract the mean, 68. So for the first observation, for student 1, we take 67 minus 68, and then we square that deviation from the mean. And then we add the observation for student 2, which is 72 inches minus the mean, 68 inches, square that. 
and continue progressing all the way through all 10 of our observations. When we add up all of those squared deviations and divide it by 9, the sample size minus 1, we're going to get that the variance for this sample is 15.56 inches squared. Now, I don't expect that that number is really going to mean anything to you right now, that you're going to say, oh, 15.56 inches squared is the variance. I know exactly what that distribution looks like, because of course you're not going to. But now we have introduced how we calculate the variance, and we're going to go into some more intuition for how to think about variances with our data. So in this slide, I have two histograms. Each of them represents 100 observations, and they're both centered around the same mean of zero. Take a minute and think about which distribution has the larger variance. Which distribution is more dispersed around the mean? So intuitively, the farther more data points are from the midpoint, the larger the variance is going to be. So in the histogram on the left, we have this tall, skinny distribution that's really tightly centered around this mean of zero. We don't have a lot of variation either far below the mean or far above the mean. So this means that uh, distribution one has a pretty low variance. Distribution two, on the other hand, has got a lot going on. It's got a lot of observations pretty far above the mean, a lot of observations pretty far below the mean. They're a lot more spread out. So that means that the variation, the variance, for the second histogram is a lot larger. So just to reiterate, the histogram on the right has got the larger variance. The histogram on the left has got the smaller variance. One technical point that you might be curious about is why we're using the squared deviation from the mean um, when we calculate the variance. There are two primary reasons for this. The first one is that squaring the terms means that it doesn't matter which direction um, an observation is away from the mean. It doesn't matter if the observation is lower than the mean or higher than the mean. Um, the squared terms are always going to end up being positive. Right? A positive number squared ends up being positive, and negative number squared is positive. So observations that are far away from the mean, no matter which direction they are from the mean, add a positive amount to the variance. The second reason is that squaring the deviations weighs larger deviations more heavily. So if you have a distribution that has a lot of observations that are pretty close to the mean, those terms that are pretty close to the mean are going to get square, but they're still going to stay pretty small, right? You can imagine that an observation that's one unit away from the mean is going to end up adding one squared, or just one, to the variance calculation. An observation that's two units away from the mean is going to end up adding two squared, or four, to the variance calculation. An observation that is 10 units away from the mean is going to add 100 units to the variance calculation. So by squaring the variance terms, we penalize um, and add more to the variance for observations that are really far away from the mean compared to observations that are relatively close to the mean. One final concept to introduce in this lecture is the concept of the standard deviation. Now the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. So let's go back to the height example that we were just talking about. We calculated that the variance of those 10 heights in our data set was 15.56 inches squared. So the variance is 15.56 inches squared. The square root of that, the standard deviation, is 3.94 inches. So it's notable that the standard deviation is expressed in inches, and the mean, 68, is also expressed in inches. So the variance was expressed in inches squared, which means that it didn't really make sense to add or subtract variance from our mean. But we can add and subtract standard deviations from our mean, because the mean and the standard deviation have the same units. So we can think of, if our mean is 68 inches, one standard deviation above the mean is about 72 inches. One standard deviation below the mean is about 64 inches. We're going to be talking about the standard deviation a lot more during this class. It's a concept that's actually really important to data analysis. But for now, I'm just going to point out one more thing. In this data set right here, where I have illustrated in this histogram, 
should notice that all of the data points are within three standard deviations of the mean. So a standard deviation is about four inches. We don't have any data points that are more than 12 inches below the mean or more than 12 inches above the mean. All of our data is pretty neatly contained within three standard deviations above the mean and three standard deviations below the mean. And this is going to actually end up being a really powerful concept for most distributions that all of the data is going to be contained pretty nicely within three standard deviations of the mean. It's a really powerful concept in statistics, so I'm just going to preview it here.